Catholics often don't realize the evangelistic significance of J.R.R. Tolkien. I mean, of course, yes, he was a great scholar at Oxford and a philologist, but almost everyone that knows about Tolkien knows about him because of his, his fiction and primarily The Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit, which is actually a children's book. Uh, but I have to say, looking back on my own sort of process, my own intellectual development, and uh, the fact that I became Catholic, I realized Tolkien, uh, he tended and nurtured my moral and aesthetic intuitions in a certain way. I mean, there's this, this thing called the Catholic imagination, but it, it truly is. It's sort of a sacramental understanding of reality in which human beings are this unique hybrid of the material and spiritual. We're not just animals. We're not just matter. We're also not angels trapped in bodies. We're this unique hybrid of the material and the spiritual, both of which are good. Uh, the world then is God's creation, including the material world, is good. It has value and integrity of its own, but is also fallen. And it's very easy as a Catholic to say both of those things. It's not an either-or question. It's a both-and. And Tolkien, perhaps more than any other fiction writer, certainly in the 20th century, embedded that basic moral and theological intuition into his fiction. And many people who are not themselves Catholic nevertheless find themselves resonating with that. There's no doubt in my mind that in the kingdom of God there will be people, uh, there'll be people in heaven that are there because of Tolkien. Maybe not because of a particular uh, argument that he himself made, but because of the way in which he has enculturated the imaginations of millions of people. I mean, C.S. Lewis himself, who never became Catholic, but certainly became a Christian, um, under the under the husbandry of his colleague and friend J.R. Tolkien. Uh, Tolkien uh, will have many jewels in his crown, I have no doubt. I do think that Tolkien's Catholic understanding of truth and beauty and goodness is ultimately, one, uh, played a role in his fiction and I think also uh, has played a role in its attraction. I mean, the fact that Tolkien can apply, appeal to evangelicals and Catholics and agnostic hippies that are, uh, you know, and partaking mushrooms in California, and they, that was who first latched on to Tolkien in the 70s, like it or not, um, speaks to something universal, both in his understand, understanding and also in the power of the literature that he created. There's no doubt in my mind that 100 years from now, if we're still here, if human beings are still here, the kingdom of God has not come in its, its full consummation, that people will still be reading Tolkien and people will probably still be <laughs> trying to adapt it to, to film. What makes Tolkien's work essentially Catholic is the sacramental imagination. Um, you can read the Silmarillion, many people have tried, and you find it's, it's first of all, the Middle Earth is theistic. There is a creator with a name. Uh, he creates the world and he has essentially legions of angels and mediating beings. Um, but none of that, it's not a sort of one-to-one -one, uh, correlation to details in the Christian worldview, so much as it is a fully realized fictional world that is in its bones and in its marrow and in its tendons Catholic. Uh, and I think well-catechized Catholics recognize that immediately. Uh, those that are not well-catechized Catholics maybe just sense it implicitly, but I think that is the source of its power.